Hi, Bay Cities. Happy Thanksgiving Sunday. We are so glad that you made a decision to join us today. Uh, we wanted to let you know that if you are in need of prayer, please visit our website at baycitieslamita.com slash pray and submit your request there and we will take it um, and hand it over to our prayer team and uh, get you on our prayer list. If you are interested in giving to our church, we advise you to visit our website at baycitieslamita.com slash giving and uh, instructions will be there. We do have three ways to give, either online, um, by mail, or by texting. And we are so happy that you were able to join us today. Uh, let's worship together.
Welcome to Church Online today. I'm so excited that you've joined us for church. I'm not going to lie. When I first saw my name on the preaching schedule for today, I was less than thrilled. I mean, Thanksgiving Sunday is always the day when we look back and remember and reflect on all that we are thankful for during the previous year. Before the fun before the food, before the family time, before the football games, before the festivities, and before the Black Friday shopping with our friends. We always take some time on the Sunday before Thanksgiving to try and figure out what we are thankful for. But if we're being honest, in 2020, all we can think about is what we are unthankful for. In fact, some of you, if you were to write down a list of the things that you were unthankful for, it would probably be longer than your kid's Christmas list. Is it just me, or does it feel like this year has been going on for half a century? I don't think it's an exaggeration or even a hyperbole to say that in just 11 months, this has been the year that has changed the world. And in the midst of all these changes, I am sure you have found yourself in the mindset of negativity and unthankfulness. And it's easily justified. There have been racial injustices, cancer battles, political unrest, deadly wildfires, economic disruptions, massive layoffs, murder hornets, a heartbreaking explosion in the city of Beirut, the tragic deaths of Kobe Bryant and Chadwick Bosman, otherwise known as the Black Panther. And, oh, Have you heard of this thing called the coronavirus? And all of this has tragically led to higher levels of anxiety, worry, fear, and frustration in the hearts and minds of people all across the globe. I guarantee 2020 will be a year that your grandkids and your great-grandkids read about in their history books. And they won't be reading about a year full of joy and prosperity. No, it will be the exact opposite. Every year has its challenges. Every year has its defining moments. Every year has its problems. But not every year has such a shift in the atmosphere. Such a paradigm shift where you are left with more questions than you have answers more complexity than you have clarity, and all of us are having to learn the art of adaptability. In my own life, this has been without a doubt the hardest year I have ever experienced in ministry. And as I prepared for this message, and as I wrestled in my own mind the reason I should be thankful, I came across a few verses in the book of Mark. Picture Jesus. He's right in the middle of his ministry, healing people, doing miracles, casting out demons, preaching and teaching and just being Jesus. And in Mark chapter 8, starting in verse 14, we come to a situation where the disciples are on a boat in the middle of a lake with Jesus. Now, I'll give you a moment to get to Mark chapter 8 if you want to follow along. But, but look what Jesus said and, and look what Jesus did in the verses prior to this moment. In Mark chapter 6, Jesus feeds the 5,000. Then Jesus walks on water and calms a storm. Then in Mark chapter 7, Jesus casts out a demon, then he heals a deaf man. Then in Mark chapter 8, the Bible tells us that Jesus feeds the 4,000, and now he is on a boat in the middle of a lake with his 12 disciples. Mark chapter 8, starting in verse 14, says this, But the disciples had forgotten to bring any food. They only had one loaf of bread with them in the boat. As they were crossing the lake, Jesus warned them, Watch out! Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and of Herod. At this, they began to argue with each other because they hadn't brought any bread. Jesus knew what they were saying. 
Why are you arguing about having no bread? Don't you know or understand even yet? Are your hearts too hard to take it in? You have eyes, can't you see? You have ears, can't you hear? Don't you remember anything at all? When I fed the 5,000 with five loaves of bread, how many baskets of leftovers did you pick up afterward? Twelve, they said. And when I fed the 4,000 with seven loaves, how many large baskets of leftovers did you pick up? Seven, they said. Don't you understand yet, he asked them. I've titled today's message, Don't Forget to Remember. This is something that I believe God has put on my heart this Thanksgiving season. And I pray over the next few moments, he will speak to your heart as well. Isn't it funny how we want to be changed, but we don't want to be challenged? We say, God, I want to go deeper, but you know, God, I don't want to be disrupted. But the problem is, God will disrupt you. He will do whatever it takes to make you become who he has called you and created you to be. I'm telling you, you serve a God that will disrupt you. In the Bible, he was always disturbing the comfortable and comforting the disturbed. And that's what's happening in our text today. Jesus is on a boat with his disciples. He just fed 4,000 people. And scholars, as you may know, they say that the women and children were not counted a part of the 4,000. So he's on a boat with his disciples in the middle of the lake, and the disciples come on the boat and they say, Lord, Jesus, we forgot to bring food. We only have one loaf of bread. And Jesus looks at them and he goes, watch out. In this moment, I imagine the disciples are like, what? Then Jesus says, be careful of the yeast of the Pharisees and Herod. The disciples, I can imagine, are like, uh, Jesus, I'm on the boat. It's you and it's us and this loaf of bread. Jesus, uh, the, the Pharisees and Herod, not on the boat. Jesus said, be careful of the yeast of the Pharisees and of Herod. Now, now this is classic Jesus. While the disciples were, were consumed about meeting their physical needs, Jesus was concerned about meeting their spiritual needs. Point number one, don't forget to remember Sometimes Jesus disrupts your life, disrupts your physical world, if it means your spiritual relationship with Jesus will deepen. What is yeast? If you took up cooking while in quarantine, you may know the answer to this. Yeast is a fungi, and if you put it in the dough, even just a little bit of yeast, it will affect and contaminate all of the bread. And the yeast is a metaphor for unbelief. It's a metaphor for pride. It's a metaphor for sin. It's a metaphor for negativity. Jesus said, just a little bit of that can contaminate the bread. He says, beware or watch out of the yeast of the Pharisees and Herod. Jesus is saying, don't start mixing that fungi in me, the bread of life, because I am the only one that can transform your soul. I am the only one that can change your life. Just a little bit of negativity in your life can make your whole life negative. Just a little bit of pride and hypocrisy in your life can consume your whole life. Because we all know sin is like a snowball. The longer it goes on, the larger it gets until a collision happens and your life is left with nothing and a lot of pain and hitting rock bottom. I love how the Bible transcends time and it meets us where we are physically at right now. And the disciples, after they heard this, and after they heard Jesus say all this, they were still confused. They were like, uh, wait a minute. I know what he's talking about. Peter, Peter, you should have brought more bread. Like, Vons was right there when we left the lake. And Jesus is like, no, no, no. I'm not talking about this physical bread. I'm talking about spiritual 
bread. I'm not talking about this physical loaf of bread, but, but you know, okay, okay. So do you want to talk about this physical loaf of bread? Okay, okay, disciples, let's go deeper and let's talk about this physical loaf of bread. You're worried about having one piece of bread when there's 12 of you on the boat, right? And then Jesus said, when we fed the 5,000, how many loaves did you have? Five. And how much leftovers were there? 12 baskets full. Then he said, when we fed the 4,000, how many loaves did you have? Seven. And how many baskets of leftovers did you have? Seven, said the disciples. Okay, I think Jesus says, I think we're good if we only got one loaf of bread because I am on the boat with you. Therefore, it's going to be all right. The disciples had completely forgotten that what Jesus had literally just done. Now, I don't know about you, but I grew up in the church, and the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000 might be tied for the most popular Sunday school lesson of all time. But how many of us knew that just two chapters later, Jesus would do it again? The feeding of the 5,000 and then the feeding of the 4,000. It should speak to us today because it lets me know that God did a miraculous worse once and then he turned around a few months later and he did it again. I believe that's good news for somebody today. That if God did something miraculous once, how many of you know he has the power to do it again? That if God healed you once, he can heal you again. That if God opened a door once, he can open a door again. He can do it again. Please do not let this pandemic make you nervous and question the power of your God. Because if he did it once, he can do it again. Some of you need to rehearse the history of all the things that God has brought you from and all the things that he's done. And it's your history with God that should give you strength and faith for what you are facing right now. Because if he did it once, he can do it again. Don't forget to remember that God is still here. God is still working. And if God did something miraculous once, he can do it again. It also means that Jesus is not just concerned with my soul. He's also concerned with my need. What a wonderful thing to know. That Jesus is not just concerned with the condition of my soul. He's also concerned about my circumstance. What you're facing, what you're going through, you need to know this Thanksgiving that Jesus is concerned about it. Can I tell you something? If it matters to you, it matters to God. Actually, scratch that. If it matters to you, it matters more to God because he is concerned about the condition of your soul. But he's also concerned about your circumstance. He's concerned about the bills you're trying to figure out how you're going to pay. He's concerned about your anxiety. He's concerned about your depression. He cares about your soul and he cares about your need. Look at Jesus, who has the power to captivate thousands of people. Thousands of people who needed physical food, not just spiritual food. Don't forget to remember, God is specifically concerned about your current circumstance. You may think he doesn't care about your need to provide dinner for your family, but he does. And as we close, as I looked at both of these miracles, the feeding of the 5,000 and the feeding of the 4,000, I found it really interesting that in both miracles, the disciples were asking the wrong questions. They were worried about what they did not have. Worry is often the byproduct of asking the wrong questions. 
They looked out and they said, how can we get enough money to buy bread for all these people? They looked out and they also said, how can we even find bread in this desolate place? Wrong questions. And worry is the byproduct of asking the wrong questions. I wonder if the reason you are worried and the reason you are unthankful is because you're asking the wrong questions. What if there's another lockdown? What if the kids can't go back to school and I got to be a homeschool teacher forever? What if I get COVID-19? What am I going to do about these bills? What if I lose my 401k? What if I lose my pension? What if I lose my job? What if I lose this? What if I lose that? Wrong questions. I'm not saying don't have wisdom, but worry And unthankfulness are often the byproduct of asking the wrong questions. And in both feedings, they asked the wrong questions. But Jesus, he gave a better question. Here's the question that Jesus asked in both miracles. He said, how many loaves do you have? Now that's a good question. I'm glad Jesus asked that question. How many loaves do you have? Do you realize the power of that question? That means stop worrying and focusing on what you do not have. How about instead you focus on what you do have? How many loaves do you have? That's the question we should be asking ourselves this Thanksgiving. What do you have at your disposal? What has God given you? When you say, how many loaves do I have? That doesn't lead to worry and unthankfulness. That leads to a mindset of gratitude. Don't let the enemy make you focus on what you've lost. Look at how many loaves you have left. You might have lost your job, but you still have your mind You still have your body, you still have your creativity, and you're still here. How many loaves do you have? It's so easy to look on Instagram and Facebook and like the picture of other people's loaves without considering what God has given you. Maybe for some of you, today it's time to stop being concerned about what you do not have and start thanking God for what you do have. Four years ago, I was living in Wisconsin, and that's exactly how you pronounce it, Wisconsin. I preached on this day four years ago. It was Thanksgiving Sunday. And this past week, I went back and I looked at my notes, and I just simply reflected on my life four years ago. And I thought about what I'm thankful for this Thanksgiving in 2020. And and in my message four years ago, I talked about some of the negative events that happened in 2016. This is what I said on Thanksgiving Sunday in 2016. There are a lot of reasons to be unthankful. Just look at this past year. ISIS continues to attack Christians, and we saw two large attacks in Brussels and also in Paris. Hurricane Matthew swept across the Caribbean and the southeast of the United States. Many people lost loved ones and their homes were destroyed. There are riots going on in our country from the election. In the past week and a half, I have been to two funerals of young adults. There is a lot we can be unthankful for. Some this Thanksgiving had no family to eat with. Some, for the very first time, had Thanksgiving without a parent, a sibling, a spouse, a child, while others are in so much physical pain they just want to end their life. Our world faces battles of human trafficking, starvation, depression, addictions, and domestic abuse is all around us. That's what I wrote in 2016. And now four years later, Thanksgiving Sunday 2020, 
How, despite all of this, are we supposed to be thankful when there are a million reasons to be unthankful? I just leave you with this thought. Don't forget to remember. Thankfulness cannot be based on our current circumstances, our current feelings, or the current world around us. But instead, thankfulness in its truest sense means that we are thankful for the person of God and what he has done and what he has promised to do. Our culture too often remembers to thank God for what we do have, but forgets to thank God for who he is. I promise you, God is still working. Even when you don't see it, he's working. Even when you don't feel it, he's working. God is still in control. He has a plan and he has a purpose and there is purpose in your pain. And I promise you, God will work all things out for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Don't forget to remember, God is still here. God is still working. God is concerned about your circumstance. And if God did something miraculous once, he can certainly do it again. So this Thanksgiving, what are you thankful for? I would encourage you to take some time and just simply write it down. And then spend some time in prayer thanking God for what you do have in your life. And and I know you'll be blessed by it. Would you just join me in praying as we close? God, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for Thanksgiving Sunday. Thank you for a chance that we can have just to reflect and think about this past year. Jesus, right now I pray for somebody, Lord, that is in pain and, and Lord, that they need a miracle to happen in their life. Lord, I pray for that miracle to become a reality in their life. And I pray, Lord, that that your power just consumes their life. Jesus, we love you. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. We thank you for entering into a relationship with us. Lord, we thank you about for all the promises that you make to us in the Bible. And Lord, this Thanksgiving, we just say thank you, Lord, for who you are. And we thank you, Lord, for for all the things that we do have in our life. And God, we pray as we enter into this Thanksgiving and this Christmas season and the weeks ahead, Lord, may you just consume our life and may you allow our relationship to grow deeper to you maybe than ever before. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for joining us for church today. On behalf of our staff, we just want to wish you a very happy Thanksgiving.